Hi everyone, welcome to module six. We are well over halfway through. We only have um, really module six, seven, and six and seven are the last sort of normal uh, modules. And then week eight, we kind of start slowing down. Week nine, all you have is your final project. So we're getting there. I'm proud of all of you and I've learned so much from you. Um, thank you for that. So let's get into the module. In module six, you are gonna learn about sociological advocating. Many of you have shared this term that you are advocates and have been advocates with several of the recent events that have happened just since the beginning of our class. So you may be comfortable with the term already. I do wanna differentiate a few things. First, of course, the author of your text is gonna go into more detail about what it means to advocate in a sociologically, sociological, sociologically mindful way. Um, but I also wanna talk about the difference between being an ally, being an advocate, and being an activist. And I don't go into the activism too much in the actual course module, but the terms, they're not interchangeable, but there's a very thin line in between each of them. So an ally is someone who kind of just says, you know, I stand with this person or I support this person, I accept this person or this group of people, right? An advocate takes that to the next level and actually participates in some form of action to create the social change that ultimately, with, the, with an ultimate goal of more equality for either an oppressed group or either for more, um, for positive social changes for the environment or for animals or something of that nature. Um, if you are a caregiver to someone, you may be that person's, well, no. If you are a caregiver to someone, you are their advocate by making sure that they get all of the things that they need. That's you physically doing something for that person, to better that person, right? Um, I am an advocate for my husband who is a disabled veteran. And through all of the things that I, I do for him, you know, um, for, well, I don't wanna go down that rabbit hole, I could. We could, I could, I could have a whole discussion here about advocacy for disa disabled people in general, but my husband, I'll pause that. I'll probably bring it up in, um, in feedback if anyone, if it becomes relevant. Um, okay. So an advocate is someone who, you know, takes the next step from being an ally and does something at some point in between advocacy, in between being an ally, an advocate, you sort of move into or can move into activism. Advocacy is public, right? It's like letting people know that this is a, a, a cause I'm willing to fight for. Activism is physically using yourself to, just as the word, the root word is active, right? To actively do something like attending a protest, um, making posters, calling legislators or uh, you know lawmakers. That is someone who is an activist for social change. So you could be an ally, an advocate, and an activist. Um, if you are an advocate, you are an ally. And if you are an ag activist, then you are an advocate and, and an ally. Um, so there, it's almost like kind of three levels of fighting for, working towards social change. I hope that makes sense. Um, some sociologists, and I've mentioned this in your um, overview as well, say that all sociological activity is advocacy. I like to think that teaching is advocacy, and there's an entire chapter in your textbook that we're not going to get to, unfortunately, but that talks about how, you know, especially in a course like this one, but it could be anything. If you're advocating for someone to learn you know, English or math or, or anything that, that in and of itself is a form of advocacy because 
Lots of people believe that education is a right, not a privilege. So we'll get back to that later. Um, okay, I wanna talk about your assignment for this week, um, as well as the writings. Writings, no, the readings, my brain, I'm sorry. In your required readings, there's only three of them, okay? And they're, they should be self-explanatory. In your optional readings, it looks a little confusing when you click on the page. The majority of what I have included there, like why the optional reading page looks confusing is because I've put summaries of what it is. And again, you can ignore the optional readings and resources, right? You don't even have to look at those if you don't want to. They are there as a supplement to enhance what you're learning, use them or don't. It's, it's fine with me either way. Okay, so your assignment this week, your discussion this week rather, is of course about sociological advocating. And it is essentially you creating an advocacy mission statement or an advocacy, it's not a statement though, an advocacy message. And I've included, I'm looking behind you because I have my screen right here. Um, I've included sort of like steps one through six. I don't expect this to be numbered in that way. I've given you some examples, um, one from Carol Baskin's website, um, her advocacy message. It's basically where you are summing up in a short, I would say, a paragraph to two paragraphs um, ish, maybe a little longer, where you are explaining the baseline for the thing that you are advocating for, whether that's, um, you know, police reform, the elimination of single use plastics, um, veganism. You know, I mean, it could be anything, but you are presenting the problem, presenting the facts and the data, sharing a story or something personal, kind of um, a heartstring story, if you will, to humanize this issue and put a, a face to the issue. Um, and then you are ultimately making a request. Now, this is not for real, right? You're not gonna actually have to post this anywhere and ask anyone for money or to call a legislator, but you could once you get done with it, if you know, that's what you wanted to do. So it's basically you saying, here's, here's all the, the facts about this issue, but connecting to your audience by using all of the things that you've learned in the term so far about being sociologically mindful, um, respecting your readers, respecting your opponents, so on and so forth, being empathetic, um, and being sure to put a face or a human element to that. Because if people just read numbers and statistics, it's, you know, it's, it's difficult. We see those messages, we hear that every day. With the current, um, with COVID-19, you know, I, I see the numbers on my, I have a tracker that I look at every day and I see that in Georgia, it's like 70,000. 70,000 doesn't really, I can't even quantify like how, how many people that is really, right? But if you hear a story of someone, of a particular person that's been impacted by that, that feels a lot differently, right? And all of a sudden it makes you connect a good bit more to that. And so I want you to do that here because remember you're advocating, you're trying to, whether you take this message and use it somewhere else or not, you are trying to advocate by getting people to see the importance of the thing it is that you are fighting for. I hope that makes sense. So. If any of it seems confusing, you don't understand, you know, let me know, please. 
Don't forget to use resources here because um, you're going to have to include statistics, etc. So you will need sources for those. If you were writing an actual advocacy message and it was like on a website, you would have to list your sources. The other alternative is making an advocacy poster, um, but that's not, that's not what we're doing here. You're making a, an actual message. Okay. Your writing assignment this week, you should love because it's incredibly easy to do. Um, I had so many ideas for this that I thought would be fun. You know, I want you, this is applied sociology. I want you to be applying what you've learned into the world. Um, but what I've left it with because I couldn't choose a particular campaign um, is this website, do something that I, it's called do something that I would like for you to choose a campaign from, participate in the campaign, and then submit proof that you have done it. Now, campaign doesn't mean you're gonna join some campaign and go out and protest and take your time and spend money and all this stuff. There's a wide variety of things that you can do, um, including posting a message to their website. Um, sometimes it's like mailing a card to someone. Um, it's, a, it's really, there's, I don't know how many, dozens, probably over a hundred, if not a lot more than that. Um, if you're under 25, participating, every time you participate in a campaign, you are entered to win um, college scholarships. College scholarships. If you're not under 25, then consider, you know, passing it on to someone that you know. Because here's why I left it at just this, so that you don't have an actual, like, writing assignment. is because you now know all of this. I know what your passions are. You can use this website, and I'm not going through all the instructions of what I just said because they're listed there for you. It's really simple. Um, and then if you wanted to take that advocacy further through the campaign that you've chosen, then you can, you know? I would love for you to share that with me if you do. Um, so your writing assignment is not an actual writing assignment. It is you participating in a campaign that could take you as little as five minutes. Some of them say they take like an hour and a half. It's Whatever you want to do, I don't care. As long as you do one of them and you submit proof that you've done it, um, that will be sufficient. I left a note, I think I left a note on your, on the assignment that after, when you sign up to do a campaign with them, they'll start sending you emails. So just go in and adjust your email preferences if you don't want that. Or after you submit your thing and you don't want anything else to do with that website, if that's the case, then you know block them or remark it as spam or whatever. Um, I've just changed my email preferences so I only get them once a week. They send neat stuff, you know, um, stuff that you can participate in that makes a difference. You are advocating for social change or social justice and it's pretty simple. So that is it from me. Um, you guys know how to find me. If you have questions, please do not hesitate to reach out for me. I am here to help you.